Hi guys, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Alana here with Jamie and we are mixing it up today, going back to a COVID conversation for a special midweek episode just for you guys. Everybody was just getting a little too comfortable with our routine. We just wanted to mix things up and, you know, shake up your week. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. So what we wanted to talk about today, this is pretty pertinent toward like the pandemic that we're going through right now. If you happen to be listening to this later, this also can pertain to just different things. Basically, the question is, what are you going to do when your church is making decisions about how they're going to respond to this pandemic or Christians around you are making decisions about how they're going to respond to this pandemic that are different than yours. So for example, like some churches are under state or city mandates to, you know, close or limit seating. Some churches are going ahead and having services anyway. Some aren't. All the things about, you know, mandated masks. We just want to address these kinds of things because we've noticed that this is something that can become very divisive in the body of Christ. Yeah. And it's not even just with churches. I just see on social media to mask or not to mask, you know, is hydroxychloroquine a good treatment or is it a horrible thing? Do you like Trump? Do you not like Trump? You know, it's Mm -hmm. like all of these extremely political things are being discussed among Christians and there are people from different, you know, different viewpoints and It's just, you know, I know our church and I shared in our um, Take 10 Tuesday, for those of you that didn't know, we have a private Facebook group called um, Praying Christian Women Community on Facebook, and you can hop on there and join anytime. And um, just about every Tuesday, we have a time of prayer. I think this week it was on a Thursday, Wednesday. It was on a Wednesday. We switched it to this week. But I prayed for unity in the body of Christ and for our churches and our leadership, because I know our church has been making some decisions lately. And I just, when, when they told us they were going to be meeting, I just thought they are, they and every other leader on the planet is in a lose, lose situation. Is that, what do you Mm -hmm. call it? A zero sum game or maybe not that, I don't know, but whatever it is, they're, they're in a lose, lose situation because Mm -hmm. no matter what they decide, there are going to be people that disagree. There are going to be people, people that agree, and there are going to be people in the middle and it's going to cause an uproar. And I know like within our church leadership, there were probably many different opinions. They I'm sure deliberated for a long time. And so I think the the prayers that really need to be going out are number one, I think from the church for our church leadership, whatever church you attend um, for, for the leadership for um, and then for the congregation and those of us that are not in the leadership making the decisions um, just for, for unity. And I like the word harmony because I feel like being a musical person that has played the piano, you know, a harmony is, made up of many different notes. Right. It's, it's not it's just not one season. note. Mm-hmm. And so it's all many notes played together. It reminds me of many members of the body of Christ. And, you know, we all have different giftings. We also have different personalities. We have different perspectives about the things that are going on in the world. And it doesn't mean that, I mean, yes, there is absolute truth. There is a time for black and white, but there is not always, there are times where there are different ways to view things and respond to things. And that I think God uses that to help us in our sphere of where we are and, and how we think and how we relate to people and how we make decisions to further God's kingdom in our own way. So I don't think we have to look at a lot of these disputable matters within the church as things that we have to all see eye to eye on or we can't be friends. Exactly. You can choose to wear a mask or not and still love your brothers and sisters in Christ who make different choices Mm -hmm. than you. So we are here to specifically just try to be a voice of reason and then to offer our prayers for the sense of harmony because this is dividing people. And really like the, the times to break fellowship are when somebody is telling you that Jesus is not the son of God and that he is not the only way to heaven. And beyond that, there should be grace. So I would say, let's talk first to people who are being cautious and stay in home as much as possible, wearing their masks, doing the social distancing, following these guidelines. Let's talk to you guys first. 
um, when other people are not as cautious as you, it can turn into a sort of hoity toitiness, mm -hmm. right? And we totally get that because it's been explained to us that the more precautions everyday people like us take, the sooner we can kind of get over the danger of this spread. Okay, but here's the other thing to remember we cannot control what other people do. And in the end, it does come down to people's personal decisions and things like that. And so I want to encourage you guys who are being super cautious, first of all, to make sure that you're not doing what you're doing out of anxiety and fear, but truly out of love for your neighbors. You can stay home as much as is reasonable and realistic for you out of love for those around you because you do not want to be somebody who contributes to the spread of this disease, right? Mm -hmm. That's different than staying home because you're terrified and we shouldn't live our lives in fear. And so if there is a lot of anxiety, that would be something to just take to the Lord in prayer, talk and pray through with a friend. Um, and I'm not saying that this isn't a serious thing, but as Christians, we need to to do what we can to not live in constant terror, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I would say to group A. And then, you know, group B, why don't you take that one? The, to the people who are being more just out and about and, and you're looking at people who are still wearing their masks or not going out, what right. are the things that they need to keep in mind? Right. And I think someone on that end of the spectrum is coming from a position of, you know, I know there are, are people that are doing that based on, I don't really, from what I have read, I don't believe that masks are effective. So why should I be told to wear one? Um, or I'm not going to live in fear. I'm going to live my life. Um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, you know, so being on that end of the spectrum, um, I think you need to look at people that are believing that masks are effective and or at the very least are saying, well, if, if I'm asked to wear a mask, I'm just going to do it because I've been told to, because if it has a chance of helping, then I'll do it. Um, mm -hmm. And just have grace and, and not point fingers. I have seen some social media posts that are kind of like, you know, equating people that wear masks to sheep and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, you're being, you're being, um, not smart and right. you know and on the other and, and and so on both sides i think there's there's guilt being thrown from both sides of it and i mm -hmm. think grace and i think of you know the the scripture that talks about eating meat sacrificed to idols yeah. so okay so you're convicted that you can eat meat sacrificed to idols let's say that equates to you're convicted that you can use the liberty of not wearing a mask but you know what that doesn't mean that you need to look down upon those who believe that they should wear a mask or that they exactly. should abstain from eating the meat sacrificed to idols. This is to keep the peace. So, and that goes for both sides. You could be, exactly. the, you could be on either side of that and relate to that scripture. Um, and I think that we need to major on the majors and mm -hmm. just, you know, one thing that we talked about, um, a few, I don't know, a week or two ago, Alana, was extend the same grace. And this is just very basic golden rule, but it still is very powerful. Extend mm -hmm. the same grace to someone else and their choices as you would like them to extend to you and your choices. So maybe exactly. flip it. I think a really mm -hmm. useful exercise would be to flip, your, flip it and put yourself in that person's situation and mm -hmm how is that person thinking about me? And then how would I like them to think about me? And then make exactly. yourself think that way about that person. Yeah. Take the other side. And again, yes, let's, let's show so much grace. Let's give, especially other Christians, yes. the benefit of the doubt and, and really check your own conscience. You can do what you're doing out of love for others mm -hmm. regardless. Right. So Jamie, I'm going to throw you on the spot because I know how much you love that. I love let's, it. <laughs> let's stage like this mini dialogue. Let's okay. say that you and I, let's say that we run a Christian center for 
um, for teen moms. Mm -hmm. And we have been told that we can no longer hold our meetings in the space that we've got because it, it cannot happen under social distancing practices. All right, which side do you want to take? One of us is going to argue for we're going to kind of promote civil disobedience and do this anyway, and the other is going to be we're going to follow, you know, the rules that our legal authorities have laid out for us. Which side do you want? Um, I'll do the civil disobedience side. Okay. All right. So we have just been told that we can no longer hold our, our meetings and we need to decide what to do. So I'm coming to you. Let's say we're co-directors mm -hmm. and Jamie, we need to figure out how we can take the same services that we're offering to these teen moms and find a way to continue to offer support, but to do so in compliance with these new laws. What do you think we should do? Um, well, I happen to know for a fact that these teen moms really heavily rely on being present in this physical space. And so um, I really think that we should consider continuing to have them meet, even though it doesn't technically fall under the guidelines. I think we've been called to this ministry, and I think that the guidelines that we've been given um, have been overridden by, by the calling that God has placed on us to serve these women. I don't think they're going to be able to be served. And I think they're going to, you know, fall into some, you know, difficult situations if we don't maintain, uh, staying open. So I absolutely agree that it would be better if we can meet face to face, but I don't think that we, we should risk it. We do have, um, the single mom, Jenna, whose daughter has special needs. I certainly don't want to encourage her to come and risk exposing her little baby um, who can't really afford to get sick. And to be quite honest, our little itty bitty nonprofit is not handled to take up legal battles against the state. And we don't have the means to do that anyway. And they're talking about pretty significant fines if we do meet. So I'm thinking that maybe we should just start meeting over Zoom once a week. So I really see what you're saying, but uh, I think that our facility has the means to be careful and to, you know, be able to practically speaking, not maybe follow the letter of the law, but I think we can follow the spirit of the law. And I think we can take some precautions um, by using partitions and, you know, making sure that we do temp checks and, and you know, all the things that are going to maintain that these kids and these moms are able to share this space together. And I, I just really feel like it's, it's something. And, you know, maybe if you're not comfortable with it, maybe I could be the person to facilitate it. And if you're not comfortable with it, um, you know, maybe I could find a way if we do come into like a legal situation to raise funds to, to um, pay fines or whatever, maybe I could just take that upon myself. Um, I don't know. We should really pray about this, I think. You guys heard it first. Jamie is offering <laughs> to pay any legal fines from anybody who stages a civil dis... No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I think that that's great. Like, So let's dissect that. So first of all, there were no personal insults. I didn't like accuse you of being... Um, I don't know. What would I accuse you of being like? A, a government-hating hippie? Well, <laughs> right. A, of being um, defiant or rebellious. Right. Or stupid. I didn't, you know, I didn't say you're not taking this seriously. This is right. a real virus. You're so dumb. You deserve to get sick. I, right. And, and you didn't tell me that I was stupid and living in fear and that I was just a sheep. Okay. So that's, that's, I mean, should be so basic, but has not been basic in conversations about these issues. So, mm -hmm. And then the other thing is we both recognize, and I hope that you guys both heard, or that you heard from both of us, like we both wanted to do what is best. And so if somebody, especially a Christian, a Christian in leadership in your church or things like that, is responding to these mandates and just this pandemic in general in a way that's different than, than you are, and even in a way that you feel is unwise, I think it's really important to go into it assuming that they truly do mean their best. They truly do intend to do what is loving and honoring to God. Um, 
And then beyond that, like I, I love when you offered to kind of take that site on. I think that that's not a bad response. I don't feel like anybody who needs and or feels compelled to be cautious should be made to feel guilty at all about that, right? So if somebody says, you know what, I'm going to show up to this meeting, but I'm going to be wearing a mask and I am going to insist on like sitting at a table by myself and kind of have my bubble of space, nobody in a situation like that should be made to feel ashamed. Um, same thing with people who decide just not to participate at all. And then those who do participate, they shouldn't be made to feel, um, you know, like they're horrible, terrible people because, um, I think there, there is a, there's love on both sides, or at least there should be, and mm -hmm. there can be, and you can argue both sides from a loving and God honoring way. And so I think what it comes down to is just whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Don't do it out of fear. Don't do it just to raise waves and to, you know, like show that you can, right. But whatever you're doing, do it for the glory of God. And there was one other point I wanted to make and I totally forgot. So I'll let you jump in with anything else you want to add. Yeah. While you're thinking, I mean, I just, I just want to talk for a second about social media because this, so as a person that, um, I like, I empathize with, with people and feelings and I get sucked into heated arguments in terms of like feeling the pain on both sides and, and mm -hmm. not liking conflict. It's very unsettling just to see all of the, the arguments taking place. And so I just think if we as a body of Christ can refrain from inflammatory posts on social media, um, mm -hmm. I think we need to have discussions. Like if you, do, if you disagree with someone, like let's say your pastor makes a decision that you disagree with, it would probably be good to have a discussion, an honest kind-hearted discussion mm -hmm. rooted in love and humility with yeah. your pastor or if a friend you know is is not doing the things that you would choose to do and you ha feel like you have information that they don't have and you want to share that with them in love um, I think those are important things to do but it's hard to do because emotions run high on on these mm -hmm. topics mm -hmm. they just have been and um, but I see I just think before you post anything on social media think, am I posting this so that I'll feel superior to people mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or am I truly just wanting to give information to people? You right. know what I mean? There's a difference. Oh, absolutely. And you'll know There's it in your is. spirit if you're honest mm -hmm. with yourself. Yeah. yeah. And same with replying to those, because I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. There've been things that I've seen that I have like had my finger. I've been like, I mm -hmm. want to reply to this. And mm -hmm. I think you know, my response would not be out of love. It would be, you know, that knowledge puffs up because I think maybe I know yeah. better or, yeah. and, and there've been probably an equal number of times that later on I've realized that that response would have been incorrect because right. I've learned something new. So mm -hmm. I think we need to be teachable. We need to be humble. And maybe like in these days of high uh, emotion social media posts, I think maybe we need to maybe not respond the first time you think you want to respond to something. Maybe mm -hmm. sit on it for a little bit before, if, if it's going to be an emotional response. Yeah. 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 No, I think that's great. And I remembered the other point I wanted to bring up, and that is that if you are going to specifically go against actual like mandates from your state or your city or things like that. Um, again, just like people who are staying home, you need to check your heart, make sure you're not doing out of a spirit of fear. I would say for those people, same thing, check your heart, make sure you're not doing out of, doing it out of a spirit of rebellion. Um, and I think that there is a way I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to come out and condone civil disobedience in this instance. That's where I'm at. But I do think that in terms of civil disobedience in general, the church response to that um, should be to continue to have love and respect, even if you are going to, you know, not adhere to what's being said. That's not what we're condoning at this point. But for those of you who are in a place where you are going to go against some of these, like, actual mandates. I just encourage you to very, very much check your heart, make sure that while you're doing that, or at least while you're contemplating that, that you do so with respect 
and love in your hearts and prayers in your hearts toward those in authority. Yeah. And I think that needs to be a constant in our minds for our church leaders, um, for yeah. our political leaders. And I would say even more so if you don't agree with them. I think yeah. Cause it's, yeah, go ahead. Um, just speak. I think for me, for my own heart, I need to pray even more for the people that I don't agree with, because I think it changes our hearts and it, it, it mm -hmm. creates humility and um, obviously prayer changes things too. And so we want to mm -hmm. pray all the time, but I don't know. I don't envy any leaders, any school leaders, any political leaders, any church leaders at this point, people making decisions of all kinds. They're in such a difficult situation. So yeah, we need to be praying more than we're complaining. Absolutely, yeah, because this is turning into a real thing. There are churches who are being told by the government, you must close your doors, and some of them are, and some of them aren't. And so again, if, if you're in a church that has decided to shut our doors temporarily, I would encourage you to give your leaders the benefit of a doubt, even if you don't agree with it, give them the benefit of the doubt that they are doing so out of love, that they are choosing to do so because they are, you know, the Bible does tell us to respect those in authority, and because they have love in their hearts and want to protect vulnerable populations. Okay, so that's that side of it. And then if, if you're on the more cautious side and your church has decided to stay open, even in spite of this, I encourage you to, again, give your leaders the benefit of the doubt that they are choosing to do so out of a spirit of love, that they have prayed over this, that they're not doing it just to prove that they can but that they believe so wholeheartedly in the power of meeting together and the purpose of the church. that They're willing to kind of put themselves and their, their church at risk. I'm not talking about like the virus risk, but like at, at risk of lawsuits or fines or whatever backlash might come. So even if you vehemently disagree with how your church has decided to handle some of these things, I encourage you to find a way, even if it takes a little bit of mental gymnastics, to give them the benefit of the doubt and to truly believe that even if it's a decision you wholeheartedly are against and think is a bad decision, that you at least put yourself into a position where you can Give them that benefit of the doubt and say they went into this prayerfully and they are doing what they are doing for the glory of God. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and, and pray over that because I know it's a messy situation. Jamie mm -hmm. and I don't even pretend to come close to have scratching the surface of this, but it just it felt like it's something that that really is weighing heavy on people's hearts and is definitely impacting churches across the nation. Mm -hmm. So and maybe the world. I I don't know what what's going on in other parts of the world. So if you are in a non-US country and want to fill us in, we would be, I'm super curious to hear how it's going yeah, for you let guys. Let us know. I, you are. I would love to know also. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, it's a little heated here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, do you want to, do you want to close this in prayer? Sure. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to lift up our leaders, lift up our churches, lift up our congregations, lift up our own hearts to you. Lord, in scripture where it says, search me, O God, and know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting is just one of my go-tos. And I just pray that we pray that over ourselves now, Lord, draw out any bad feelings or impure motives that we have for doing things or for attitudes that we have toward people, um, attitudes that are driving the way that we think or act or speak, and, and just uproot those, God. In the name of Jesus, we just pray that you would allow us to truly walk from a place of love and from a place of humility, honoring one another above ourselves, and that especially, I mean, with everybody that we come in contact with, with obviously, but especially as the body of Christ, you tell us that we're a city on a hill and that a city on a hill cannot be hidden. And I just, I take that to mean that we're going to be watched whether we like it or not. People are watching and that is a heavy responsibility to bear the responsibility of being image bearers of Christ to the world. And I know that there are people that are just waiting to see us mess up. 
to say, well, they say they're Christians, but you know, if that's what Christianity is, I don't want any part of it. God, let us not be the reason for anyone to hesitate to come to Jesus. Help us to be a city on a hill that our light would shine before men, that we would show brotherly love, that we would model godly reconciliation, that we would model humility and mutual respect, and that we would show that we can be different. We can be many members of the same body, and we can operate well, that we won't stumble around um, disconnected, that we can actually move in an effective way and be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. God, we just thank you for our leaders in our churches, and we lift them up to you today, God. We just pray that you would give them that wisdom that you promise to give for all who ask, and that they would not waver from that wisdom, that they would stand firm on it. We pray against division, that the enemy would have no foothold in the leadership of our churches or in our congregations, Lord, that what the enemy intends for evil would be used for good, for healing, for strengthening of relationships because of these hurdles that we have to go over, God, and that your church would come out on the other side stronger and more effective and just even better equipped to share the gospel with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.